from Asia to Africa as concerns are growing that the coronavirus may soon spread to the continent. How well equipped would these countries be to protect their people? Meanwhile, China revokes the credentials of three Wall Street Journal reporters. Where's the fine line between free speech and racist-laden speech? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. The Chinese are fighting a coronavirus that's already killed more than 2,200 people, but they end alone. Leaders of African Union, for instance, have expressed their solidarity with China's full-scale efforts to contain the epidemic, especially since Africans are now directly um, challenged, let's say, by the spread of this virus. According to a modeling analysis published Wednesday in The Lancet, uh, a respected medical journal, Egypt, Algeria and South Africa are among the highest risk countries in the continent. So how prepared is the continent? What can be done? And with some 61,000 Africans studying in China, including about 4,600 in Wuhan at the epicenter of the epidemic, how have they coped with the situation? Joining our discussion from Nairobi, Douglas Ogwatch, a senior editor from CGTN Africa, from Bangkok, Hannah Ryder, the CEO of Development Reimagined, and from Wuhan, Malo Dordin Boketombe, an engineering student from the Republic of Congo. Uh, welcome to all of you. Let me go to Malong in Wuhan in the first place. Now, you are a first year stu master student at Wuhan University of Technology. You have been in Wuhan since 2013, and you're also the representative of all the Congolese students in Wuhan. Since the outbreak of the epidemic so far, how are you and your fellow students coping with the situation? in terms of keeping your health and making sure that your daily life is uh, not disrupted to a point where you can't go about your usual business. Thank you so much for the question and thank you for having us here. Uh, so since it started, uh, we are keeping in touch with uh, our, our fellow, my fellow country mates and uh, we are all respecting the regulations that uh, the authorities have given us and uh, so far we are all concerned about the situation yes we are afraid we are afraid and uh, we think uh, that our government should uh, take us back to our country because uh, we have been seeing the the number of deaths increasing each and every day and uh, uh, but uh, we are we are also trusting the Chinese government to work on uh, the, 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 the the medicine so that uh, people can be secured and uh, healthy again. So far, what is the situation among the Congolese students, for instance? Uh, I know that uh, at least one African student in Wuhan was reportedly infected, someone from Cameroon, but he has not now recovered and has been allowed to leave the hospital. And uh, uh, according to information that I know, that uh, uh, all of the medical fees of uh, African students are being covered by the Chinese government. What about the people that you know? Is there anybody infected? Do you have any difficulties accessing any medical help so far? So far, there is no Congolese student affected uh, with this virus. We are all healthy, thank God. But uh, we have difficulties to get food. I mean, it's, it's now it's not allowed anymore to to get out and uh, to get some food, some 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 stuff to to make ourselves uh, good food. It's very difficult, and we are all locked up, and uh, it's very stressful. But uh, we are, you know, we are uh, trying to tell to each other that it's going to be okay and uh, comfort each other. But uh, we are so stressed and scared. Mm. Uh, what do you mean locked up? Um, I understand that basically the whole country is in some kind of self-quarantine, that people are advised not to go out. And basically, for instance, from my uh, experience in my compound only one person of every household is allowed to go out to buy vegetable although gradually because of the work to restart the economy people have been uh, 
arranged to restart their work in an orderly manner, but you know, for for almost three weeks, the entire country had put themselves into self-quarantine. What exactly do you mean by lockdown then? I mean uh, by that that here in Wuhan, for instance, like people are not allowed to go out of the compound. Mm. We are not allowed anymore. Like for the student I live, I I rent an apartment and. We are not allowed to get out of the, 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 the compound. And for the students that uh, live in campus, they are not allowed to get out of the campus. Even though they want to get some vegetables, they have to pass uh, to there, someone else. I see. Is there anybody to help you, though? Can you ask for people to help, for instance, other students or yes, teachers yes. Or, the, or the community or anybody? Yes, yes, yes. For the people that are living, like, renting apartments, like the community has... Uh, uh, people that are coming each and every day, you order things and then they come and they supply. But okay. still, it's not what we want as, as foreigners. You know, get some vegetables and only vegetables and meat. It's very, we understand the situation is, 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 is very stressful, mm. but that's only what we can get, vegetables and meat each and every day. I see. Well, it's a, it's a difficult situation, I can understand. It's, a, in general, a very difficult situation uh, in the province of Wuhan. Let me go to my um, guest uh, in Bangkok, uh, Wenjie. Um, some African countries have announced it's best for African students, however, to stay in, the, uh, in China, in the areas where they are at this moment, for instance, because, as we have seen in past cases, when, people, when countries evacuate, their nationals to their home countries, they actually brought the virus back to those countries in the case of, uh, of France, for instance, uh, uh, in two batches, 36 of the 254 passengers evacuated have shown uh, symptoms of the coronavirus. So what kind of dilemma, you know, because some of the African countries are also in uh, not, not a ready state, let's say, to tackle a large-scale outbreak. Yeah, well, Liu Xin, you raise a very important point, the, the question for governments what they should be doing. Um, it is a very difficult dilemma, of course, in Africa, health systems are operating at, at least below 50% of the level at which you might expect a, a high-income country to be, countries to be operating on average. Uh, at the same time, we do have eight African countries who have evacuated in total around 500 of their citizens. Uh, from China. So there is a range of different action uh, with regards to the African continent. And what we have been saying is since there are uh, certainly around 4,600 student, African students and citizens in total in Hubei, and you've heard just now the, there are different levels of anxiety, concerns, mm -hmm ability to access food, medical supplies, etc. There needs to be some sort of needs assessment of this vulnerable group as well as potentially uh, extra support and coordinated support across the African continent. Yeah. There's no reason, for example, of course there's some, there's some countries that do have worse health systems than others, but why couldn't, for example, Egypt or South Africa uh, offer to support some of the other countries in quarantining because they do have better health systems? So these are, these are, these are conversations the African uh, health ministers leaders should be having between themselves and I'm pleased to hear that the African Union will be uh, convening the African uh, health ministers tomorrow uh, in Addis to discuss this point as one of three agenda items. Mm. Mr. Okwaj, from your observation and from what we have heard from the student in Wuhan, by the way, the situation overall in Wuhan, uh, if not in all of the uh, cities in Hubei province, has been the most severe right. and uh, everybody is pretty much affected, of course, there, there has been quite a big um, disorderly situation, although the situation is improving and the, and the government and the people involved are doing everything they can to make sure that they contain the virus because not just foreigners in China yeah. are affected, but Chinese people else, ourselves are the first of ones course. You know, who are at and, stake here. So Mr. And it's not, yeah. it's not to distinguish, yeah, mm. it's not to distinguish uh, foreigners from Chinese people and of course Chinese people are going through a huge amount of suffering and we've just heard that there has only been one African citizen uh, who has uh, been affected yeah. so far. However, at the same time, 
these, this, because of language barriers, these, these students and citizens are subject to you know, a whole range of disinformation. They're not able to understand exactly what's happening, not necessarily able mm. to read all the Chinese that they see. Of course. These are important things to be factoring in, yeah. and, uh, and that's why we do see them, and my firm sees them as a vulnerable group that should be uh, ex uh, supported Doctor, yeah, uh, Mr. by the African governments. Yeah, Mr. Alkwaj, from your perspective, how do you think different countries in Africa uh, can handle this situation in the most possible, in the most suitable way? Of course, there is no unified answer. Some countries have more vulnerable systems, uh, medical systems than others, and some countries might have already evacuated their nationals but others have chosen to trust the Chinese system. How do you look at the complexity of the situation and uh, what's your thoughts observing things from Nairobi? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, now, I'd like to, I'd like to refer to... Um, I'd like to refer to a, a panel I sat on yesterday, mm -hmm. um, which was uh, uh, focusing on the coronavirus. And uh, two panelists were of particular interest to me. One of them was from a political party. And as you know, political parties uh, are uh, vehicles uh, which are purposed to win elections and form government. Uh, the other panelist was uh, a policy analyst, analyst uh, who was also attached to uh, some high uh, uh, political office in the country. Uh, but what surprised me uh, coming from the palace was uh, the level of, uh, of, 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 of lack of information, mm. uh, even at uh, uh, places like that. Uh, because uh, 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 it seems that uh, what needs to be tackled fast and quickly is the flow of disinformation. Mm. It's very difficult from the African side to separate myth and fact. Uh, myth and fact and fiction has sort of melded together uh, and this is causing fear uh, and also uh, a panic in some sections. So I think, I think uh, the rate of disinformation uh, has sort of uh, uh, panned out and caused problems. Uh, however, uh, it, is, it also stems from the lack of understanding of, uh, from, an, from an African perspective, from the lack of understanding of Chinese culture, uh, the Chinese people, their way of life, their food, and so on and so forth. So, so, so the issue of, of, of cultural exchange and people to people uh, between China and Africa, this is an opportunity. This virus has presented an opportunity for Africans and Chinese to work more on the issue of cultural exchange and people-to-people -people exchange so that we, both sides can understand more right. the other side's culture because that I see as one of the biggest problems. Yeah. And what it has led to is an us versus them kind of situation um, um, because of this disin disinformation. Okay. All right. uh, however, uh, on, uh, on, on how Africans are dealing with the issue, I think there is good and bad news. The good news is that uh, a lot is being done by governments mm -hmm. in terms of uh, screening, yeah. in terms of surveillance, uh, in terms of uh, uh, setting up health systems that can uh, deal with the, uh, the virus. Yeah. However, as you may know, uh, Africa's situation is, is very different. There are some well-off African countries, uh, but there are also equally very poor African countries. Uh, where uh, disease outbreaks can pose very serious challenges right. because of overcrowding, uh, issues like sanitation, sure. uh, issues like uh, lack of public health uh, facilities. So okay. there are challenges, but I think these are being addressed. Yeah, all right, we have to leave it there. Many thanks to my guest, uh, Douglas Oakwatch, a senior editor for CGTN Africa, Hannah Ryder, CEO of Development Reimagined, and most of all, Marlon Dordin, a book at Tembe from the Republic of the Congo. I do hope that the situation will get better for you and your fellow students in the short time and that uh, some help, will, some more help will be coming your way. You have been watching The Point with me, Li Xin. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, China hits back at leading at a leading American newspaper for publishing a biased or even racist-laden opinion piece. Um, has China overreacted? Stay with us.